takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he's lying. He's gonna lie. You be a vessel that God is worth. Because you somebody might need your holy presence to save them when they Well, hello there, Dr. Will Wheat, one more time. We're here visiting with you again with another thought, and this is actually the blindfold will not prevail to. The blindfold will not prevail to. Now, um, the subject matter could also be um, entitled, The Gates of Hell Shall Not Prevail. And the gates of hell that shall not prevail has to do with the right interpretation which deals with your mind and that which has covered or blinded your mind from the truth. I believe that one of the things that we want to talk about today is the power that is laden within your soul, the power that you have. For many of us, when we pray, especially those of us who have the Christian faith and we pray to God, we pray to God asking for his help. We believe that there's some part of our life that is insufficient, that is not strong, that is not worthy of the challenge that is facing us, and we need some divine assistance. The reason that we think that way is because we haven't been properly taught and it has not been properly revealed to us of the power that's laden in us. A lot of times this power that's laden in us is not used appropriately, is used inappropriately, and it could be thought of as being evil. But the thought, but that is a fallen mindset. The reality is that you have power laden inside of you so that you can do that which is God-like because you have been redeemed to the image and the likeness of God. The image and the likeness of God is in you. And that image and likeness of God that is in you is sufficient for everything that you face in time. God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. He has also blessed you with everything that pertains to this life and to godliness. You all ready have it. But you need a revelation of who Christ is, and you need a revelation of who you are. And when you realize who Christ is, that he is the Son of God, that he is the Anointed One sent by God, and then also with that realize that as he is, so are you. So whatever his attributes are, they're your attributes. Whatever his anointing is, that's your anointing. Whatever authority that he has on the earth, you have that same authority. And if he co-labors with God, you are also co-laboring with God to set things right. If miracles were available for him to make correction, and the miracles that flowed from him is the maximal love that was in his heart for humanity or for whomever he was performing a miracle on or releasing a miracle into their life. That same power rests in you. But there's a, a mind renewal, there's a purification of the mind that needs to take place for this reality to become very uh, focused inside of you. So let's take a look at this. So here, uh, in Matthew chapter 16, and verse 18, we will read, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, what we are talking about there, what that verse of Scripture is talking about there, is that the revelation of Christ, the revelation that Christ is in time, that the Christ is in the man who is named Jesus. And seeing that Christ, the Son of God, is in the man who is named and called Jesus, 
Christ is also in you. This is the rock of revelation. And from this revelation, I'll build my church. I will refresh. I will renew the identity and the redeemed likeness and image of God in those who will hear, adhere to, and receive this divine revelation. Love has covered it all. Love has paid or redeemed what was necessary, what was thought to be lost, which has never been lost. These terminologies are used for the fallen mind to lift it up. And once the fallen mind is lifted up, these terminologies are no longer necessary. The terminology are the word atonement is not necessary, the word redemption is not necessary. When we come into full light and understanding that no separation has actually happened between ourselves and God. All right? Now, in Ephesians chapter 10, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Every invisible authority and government in the arena of the heavenlies were confronted with the display of God's genius. The ecclesia disperses the very uh, the varied magnitude of God like a prism in human form. Now, friends, was explanation to this. This is only part of his explanation on this verse. It says, Matthew 16, 18, up on this rock, I will build my ecclesia, authentic identity, and the gates of Hades from ha, negative, and edo to see the blindfold will not prevail. So the blindfold that is over your mind, over your true mind, over your consciousness of who you are and who God is to you, will not prevail because in you is vision. In you, the vision shines through. Okay? Now, also in Revelation chapter 12, uh, 8 and Revelation 17, 14, these joint forces in that hour to wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb defeats them since he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and sharing with him in his victory is his kindred. They recognize their origin in this conversation and are now of the same persuasion. The Lamb led them into freedom from their lost identity and their doubts. The reference scriptures to that thought is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24, and Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, the Mirror Bible. Now, all we're saying here, all we're trying to get you to understand is because of your fallen thought, you have misidentified yourself, you have laid hold of an identity that does not belong to you, and you set aside your true identity. You set aside your authentic identity from God that has never changed, has never lessened in value. It remains the same. It's just a waiting for you to wake up to your true, authentic identity, to assume the power that comes with that identity, or the inherent power that comes with that identity. All right? So in John chapter 7, in John chapter 7, uh, it says, verse 38, in your recognizing that I am what the scriptures are all about, you will discover uniquely for yourself, face to face with me, that you are what I am all about. And rivers of living waters will gush out of your innermost being. So this is saying, this is, this is packed with how miracles happen. Because once you find out your, your authentic identity, once you lay a hold of who you really are, you will also recognize the latent power in your soul and living waters, things that bring forth life, this inside of you will flow from you as like an artesian well pushing up through a rock and gushing and giving water and, 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 and life to those things that are hardened and barren. It pushes through that. It pushes toward the sun. It pushes toward the light. So the life that's in you is pushing outwardly so that you can affect everything 
and everyone that's around you with the life that is in you. The life that is in you cannot be hell there, for it is pushing, it is stronger than any offense that comes against you. Now, I was thinking um, earlier, what would I say to those who are suffering, who are sick? I would ask them to take a few minutes to take their mind off of their su suffering as much as they can, off of their illness as much as they can, off of their pain as much as they can. But I would refresh them or, or encourage them, it's okay to have medication to help treat you until you can mentally conquer those things that are coming against you physically. If you can't do it mentally, if your mind is not on that level, then you need to take those things that will, it will assist you. It's almost like having a magic pill assist and fool your brain. Your, your body and the ailment in your body is still there. The pain masks in your brain, tells your brain that there's no pain. It doesn't do anything. The pain is still there, it's still functioning. But when your brain thinks that there's no pain, you think that you've been relieved of pain. Well, if medicine can do that, then you can do that yourself with your own thought power. You can convince yourself, tell yourself that I have no pain. The body can't feel anything and the nerves are at peace within itself and within my mind, I'm at peace. Because my mind is at peace, that peace transcends my whole being. There's nothing in the depths of my mind or in the depths of my subconscious that is disturbed. There is peace at the deepest level. There is quiet and stillness. Now what will happen when you, try, when you try to enter that? Things on the outside will try to disturb you, but you got to stay focused on the peace that's within you. And as you stay focused and you gaze upon that peace, it's going to gush out of you as living waters and affect everything that's dead outside of you will spring to life and favor for you. But you can do that as you learn and practice your thought meditation, pr projecting proper, authentic realities outward from within, outward. God is not outside of you. God is inside of you. When you notice in Scripture about the Holy Spirit, it's not an impouring, but it's an outpouring because He's in you. And He pouring, that's that water, that's that gush pouring out of you that brings life. Amen? <clears throat> Here in uh, verse 39, it says, Jesus spoke about the Spirit whom those who would believe that He is the conclusion of Scripture were about to grasp since who Jesus was in all His majestic splendor was not yet fully acknowledged and thus the Spirit was not yet evident. The word obtained, translated, to receive, lambano, means to comprehend, to grasp, to identify with. Note, Holy Spirit is an outpouring and not an impouring. Now, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, his body nailed to the cross hung there as the document of mankind's guilt. In dying our death, he canceled the detailed handwritten record which testified against us. Every stain on our conscience reminding of the sense of failure and guilt was thus fully blotted out. Every stain, anything in our conscience, so we're, we're cleansed, our conscience is clean. It has been blotted out. You are not to recall or to feel as though something you've done has kept you from your glory, kept you from God. Any mistake, that any shortcoming that you have made has been blotted out. It's forgiven. It's not even on record. He just wants you to be brought back and reconciled to Him. All mistakes are forgiven. Only thing that He wants you to experience is His love and the power of restoration restoring you. The things that are in your heart, 
The things you want to do, He wants you to do them. The experiences you want to have, He wants you to have them. The glory and the splendor that He wants and has planned for you is yours. You can have it. And all you need to do is to put yourself in a place of receiving the gift. You know, you put your hand out and you receive. You know, when I go out uh, with my children and my grandchildren, and we out buying something, something as simple as ice cream and stuff. They never ask me, can I afford it? I ask them what they want. They tell me, and I get it. If it's a, it's a, a small drink, a large drink, they never say, well, for, Grandpa, can I have a large something? No, they just say, what do you want? I want large. Never ask them if I can afford it. Because they understand and they believe that I can. They understand uh, that they don't have to... Um, deny themselves or what's really in their heart when someone is giving it to them as a gift. What you want, what gift do you want to receive? Don't deny yourself what you really want, all right? I want you to not to do that. Do not deny yourself. Say what you want and you will receive what you say. Whether you like it or not, whether it becomes boring or not, it's what you want at the time. Receive it. Don't deny yourself. Don't deprive yourself and your heart from experiencing the best that's there. Because that best, that vision for the best came from God. It didn't come from you. God put that inside of you. So reach out for it. Don't deprive yourself of it. Don't think you're not worthy of it. You are worthy of everything that God has promised you. So in Colossians, Again, his body, nailed to the cross, hung there as the document of mankind's guilt. In dying our death, he canceled, I want you to pay attention to that, he canceled the detailed handwritten record which testified against us. So if anybody's bringing up your past, if anybody is telling you you're not worthy, they are not from God's spirit. They don't have God's spirit. They don't have God's mind toward you. Do not listen. If they tell you that you're excluded, that you have to jump over hoops to receive the goodness and the blessings of God, they're not agents or spokespersons for God. They are spokespersons of egoic systems that are designed on leveled manifestations and not on spiritual truth. You need to break free from that and see the unlimited blessings that cover you and empower you to do all that God wants you to do. Now let's look at what at the words in parentheses. It says the word dogma comes from deco, a thought pattern. Thus, thought patterns engraved by human experience are cons a constant failure to do what the law required. In his personal handwriting, mankind endorsed their own death sentence. The hands of fallen mankind struck the body of Jesus with the blows of their religious hatred and fury when they nailed his body, uh, his bloodied body, to the tree. They did not realize that in the mystery of God's economy, Jesus became the scapegoat of the entire human race. And that's found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5. See notes on Hebrews chapter 8 uh, in the Mirror Bible, if you want to take this a little bit further. Uh, verse 12, the slate wiped clean, the old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. The slate has been wiped clean. So let's take the blindfolders off. Let's take religious blindfolders off. Let's take off the guilt. Let's take off the unworthiness. Take the blindfolders off and see clearly what God has called you into. He has not relented nor has he repented, nor has he lied to you. What he has promised you is yes and amen. Well, this is a short video today. We just wanted to encourage you with part two of this. Take off your blindfold. Walk freely into the liberty that God has for each one of you. If you start with yourself and allow your light to shine and allow the blessings of God to flood your life, your family, your friends, your associates will see this light in you and ask you, what must I do 
to be saved or to enjoy this inheritance that is freely yours. Does one or does the same inheritance belong to me? And you can boldly, boldly say yes, and you can boldly give them the instruction of how to obtain their inheritance. All right, so what we want to do now, uh, we want to put up our web page, which is www.nccfc.net on the screen. Um, we are back meeting on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. in Inglewood, California. So this video comes in lieu of me doing a live on Sunday morning. So we're doing a video recording and we're posting it during our time that we usually go live on Sunday when we were quarantined. Well, we're no longer quarantined. We're actually meeting at 315 South Market Street in Inglewood, California. We're meeting there temporarily. So if you want to find us temporarily, you better come out and find us before we move. But even if we do move, I plan to put our new address on our webpage. Now, on our webpage, you can also leave a donation, a, don a, a gift of love. You can give your time, your offering there. You go to www.nccfc.net and hit on the donation tab. Leave us a tithe, an offering, or just a love gift so that we can continue doing what we're doing. Now, if you want to mail in your tithe and your offering, you can also do that. You can mail in your tithe and offering to 2851 West 120th Street, okay, uh, Suite E is in Edward 522, Hawthorne, California, 90250. Now, if you uh, um, have a Zelle account, uh, because of my sh the color of my shirt today, you might not be able to see this. So, as our Zelle account is called Sister Wheat at yahoo.com that's sister we at yahoo.com that that's right here hopefully that my shirt is not uh, wiping that address out so the zell account is sister we at yahoo.com and then those who are watching this on 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 facebook we also have a youtube um uh, channel which is will we three or the gathering and so it's youtube uh, forward slash or backslash will we three you come you can watch us there and if you're watching this on youtube don't forget to like the video like the video hit that like button and after you hit the like button uh, i want you to also subscribe and once you subscribe i want you to hit the bell and once you uh you hit the bell it'll give you notification when we put up videos like we're doing today a new video is up you will be notified and i'm also putting up some short videos during the week I send video emails by way of Talk Fusion. I put these same video emails on Instagram, and I'm also putting them on YouTube. So you're notified because we want to keep giving you the content to help you renew your mind. We're committed to helping us lay that old baggage aside and, and lift up that which has always been there for us, but has veiled us, has been veiled to us. We're going to pull those veils apart so that we can see clearly the glory of God. And in looking at his glory, we see that our image in a likeness of God has been redeemed within each and every one of us. So I want you to just, re just keep listening to the content. It may sound redundant, but you need to hear the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So uh, our address that again, that we're meeting on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. is 315 South Marcus Street, Inglewood, California. 90301 and the time is 9 a.m. okay so if you want to see us tomorrow morning uh, or if, if this video gets to you too late and you want to come us, uh, see us the next following morning you can come to that address and we'll be there now as long as we're under the orange tier there's protocols of the building that we, we're worshiping in that we have to maintain we have to maintain those protocols wipe your feet wash your hands sign in put on their masks, put on their gloves, and come into the sanctuary, and we will begin to minister in song and in word. Also, uh, we only can seat, as of now, between 47 and 50 people, but once we go to orange tier, we'll be able to fill up that sanctuary again, because we're gonna have to be distant socially, front, back, and to each side, and we can have more seats in the sanctuary. But if you wanna come, you wanna be there early, okay, you wanna be there before nine o'clock, to make sure you're able to get in, and partake of the, the live um, uh, ministry of song and the word and fellowship that we have on Sunday mornings in Inglewood, California. Well, this is Dr. Will Wheat, and I want to thank you 
I thank you for taking time to hear what God has placed on my heart. I thank you for considering this truth and adding it to your consciousness and practicing it. I thank you for your financial support so that we can keep bringing you this content, that we can keep coming to you. You know, YouTube is not paying me anything. I don't have enough followers or subscriptions for that to happen. So you are the reason we're able to come. You're the reason that we're able to research materials. You're the reason that we're able to keep going forward. Uh, with what we're doing, buying camera equipment, lights, and all the other things that we need to make this production a success. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your help. And remember, as always in closing, I remind you again and again, God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat. See you on Wednesday.